Hi, my name is Felice and I'm the Happy Star Wars Guy. And today we are going to kind of spruce up this figure. And I think I might even detail it a little bit more and um, uh, make some things pop out. It's a figure that uh, has no major resale value and I would like to make it kind of look a little bit nicer so I'm gonna do that alright so we're gonna use a number two size brush to do the brown around here and on the hands and it looks like I need to do a little touch up. I'm just going to touch up all around and then we're going to end up doing some silver around the eyes um, and the top part because it's all rust, uh, rubbed off. And um, while we do this I'm going to talk a little bit about Nomi Sunrider. And I'm going to just check the different browns that I have just to get an idea of what colors I'm working with. That seems a little dark. And I'm gonna rinse the brush. Try it off. And I've got this leather brown that's by Army Painter War Paints. And then I'm using also Citadel's base Rhinox Hide. And I might do a combination. It looks like this leather brown um, can lighten things up a bit. And it looks like the Tuscan Raider has kind of a lighter brown color to it. So we're going to just try that out. Um, mix it up. And see how light we can go. It's getting it lighter. I might add a little bit, just a touch of white to the mix. Using a matte white from uh, Army Painter War Paints again. Just a drop. Just to see how much that lightens it up. Okay, kind of liking the color there. It's maybe a little too light. Might just take another brush and get a dab of brown in here again to darken things up. want to try to match the colors as much as possible. Let's just see how this turns out. Actually, I might get a smaller brush. We're going to do... I have a number one. Might have to break into the new brushes. Ah, here we go. Here's a number one. All right, so we're going to get a little paint on there. And we're going to go in and just see how this matches up. Yeah, you know, I don't like that. I really think the Rhinox hide might be the perfect brown for this. So we're just going to get rid of the paint on the one and just dig right into this. Um, going to wipe this down, have a redo. Okay. So, Nomi Sunrider. 
If you've never read the comic books from Dark Horse, which I highly suggest you do because they were written really well, um, the Dark Horse comics started a story with Nomi Sunrider and her husband Andor. Um, see, I'm going to come around here. I don't know if you can see there's a little silver there. We're going to go over it with brown and then silver after I get done here. So Nomi Sunrider married to Andor, a uh, Jedi Knight, um, ended up getting killed in front of her um, and their baby, Vima Sunrider. And what happened was is that um, Ander and Nomi were already discussing Nomi um, being force sensitive and you know potentially becoming a Jedi. So what they did was um, talked about where to go you know um, study to be a Jedi and Ambria came up in conversation. So after Andar died, um, Nomi knew to go to Andar, or Ambria, and I got a little paint there. Let's see if I can wipe it off. And so, um, Nomi goes to Ambria to seek out Master Thon. Master Thon is this really cool Jedi, and he he looks like this lizard. Um, this giant lizardish lion type looking character. Look him up. T H O N you'll be able to find him, Master Thawne. Um, really an incredible Jedi um, in his own right. And back then, the lightsabers were incredible because they had a power pack connected to them. So the range of motion for a, a lightsaber duel was very short distance. Um, there was no lightsaber throwing. <laughs> because the lightsaber was connected to a power pack in order to uh, be an effective device. Get that extra paint off. Okay. So, Nomi Sunrider uh, seeks out Master Thon on Umbria and um, she starts to get trained. And the thing about Ambria is, is it's one of those planets that we've seen in Star Wars stories that holds uh, not only the, the light side, but the dark side of the Force. So it's, it's almost like when Nomi went into training, she was, uh, it's kind of like Dagobah. <clears throat> Dagobah ends up being this interesting location in Jedi lore of having this kind of force sensitive planet for Jedi and Sith alike to go to. So on Umbria, Naomi. Nomi Sunrider gets her training and then during the training time there ends up being the Freedonad crisis. Freedonad was a um, dark side adept who um, somewhat conquered death in a sense. He was one of the Sith that did that. And 
so there was this uprising and Nomi was called in to help along with Master Thon and they end up doing more training with her with various other masters and she becomes a fairly powerful Jedi actually a very powerful Jedi because the next thing that happens in the storyline is um, Ulic Keldroma and her become really close and they end up um, having to fight during the Sith War where Exer Kun creates a, an army of Jedi to revolt against the Jedi Order And in turn, Ulic Keldroma, close to Exer Kun, ends up being one of the fallen Jedi. And as I pointed out earlier, there was a love interest between Nomi Sunrider and Ulic Keldroma. And um, what that entails is the fact that she had this affinity toward him and he was getting out of hand and becoming too powerful she used a force ability um, to sever Ulic Keldroma from the force and I mentioned this in past videos the force severing Luke used it on himself um, while he was on the island so that no force sensitive user could seek him out which was really smart, but in um, Nomi Sunrider and Ula Keldroma's case, she was trying to get him to avoid hurting other people in the group by severing him from the Force. Just gonna, I don't know if you can see this, I'm gonna come in right here. So, Nomi Sunrider takes out Ulic Keldroma, one of the most powerful Jedi, who became Sith with Exer Kun. And she ends up becoming the uh, master of the Jedi Council later on. And that's pretty cool. She went from being just a wife of a Jedi Knight to becoming a asset to the Jedi Order. She has a really cool story and you can find her in Dark Horse Comics in the Legends. Ulic Keldroma has an interesting story as well because once he was severed from the force he ended up going into exile and Nomi wanting to come back to him tried um, tried finding him and I believe if I remember correctly Vima goes to find him and searches for him to bring him back. She wants to be trained by him and he can't do it. Okay, so that's coming along pretty well. We're going to do the hands. paint has really good coverage. I really like using it. It's good modeling paint. For these types of projects.
Ula Keldroma was a uh, Jedi who also had a brother who was a Jedi. And if I remember correctly, Ulic ends up cutting off the hand of his brother during the Sith War. Or maybe K. Keldroma had it cut off some other way, but I, I know he lost his hand. Seems to be a problem with the Jedi, huh? <laughs> Anakin losing his hand, Luke losing his hand, and that great meme out there warning Kylo what it means to be a Skywalker. <laughs> the other thing that I like about this paint is it seems to kind of dry quickly in the right environment. I'm painting in the basement, so it's a little, maybe not as dry as you would want it. Let me go back over this, it's a little light. Go over the face mask. And this is a, a number one brush. I ended up, again, going down from a two. Two is uh, too much. Okay, there's the brown. I'm gonna let it dry for a minute. I'm gonna go inside the eyes here. Get them dark with the brown. I'll rinse my brush. All right, now that it's dry, I am going to grab a very fine tipped brush. I'm going to use zero zero on the brush. I'm going to get some metallic, shake it up. This is Citadel Rufang Steel. By the way, I am not affiliated with any painting companies. This just happens to be paint that I've come to learn to use, just so you all know. And so I'm going to get the tips here. I think I'm going to end up taking a little bit out and putting it into a container. Sometimes I use context lens containers for paint. It, um, it's a pretty good deal. Um, reuse things, I like to do that. So I'm gonna mix this paint up really well. Grab a little bit and get it in here. Sometimes I like to keep a, an old brush on hand to pull out paint. It's a, I don't know, something I like to do. Okay, so we're gonna dig in here and make sure we don't have too much paint on the brush. Use my finger to kinda keep everything steady. We're just gonna hit these. We're gonna have to do a couple of uh, couple of layers of paint on this, I can tell, because it just isn't um, sticking right away onto this plastic. I'm 
we didn't do any primer painting with this which is why it's going to take a couple extra layers to get things going. We're going to go nice and easy around these points. So, yeah, Nomi Sunrider, if you haven't checked her out, her story, um, you can find it on Wikipedia. You can go to Dark Horse Comics and you can get the comic book, you can go to Amazon and get the old books because Amazon is I think, partnered with uh, Comixology or whatever so you can read comic books um, from m multiple places um, on your Kindle if you have one that's how I like to read my comic books these days I like to cut down on paper Okay, that's uh, coming along quite well, I think. Giving new life to this figure. It's fun. <laughs> this has a bit of a kind of an error to it because it's got <clears throat> a. Uh, Plastic is a little off from the mold. Okay, this will be crucial. <laughs> Going around these eyes. Let's do it nice and slowly. Get those Tuscan Raider details in. Tuscan Raiders are, um, I don't know, it, it, it almost seems, they're cool, but it almost seems like they are the epitome of um, low-budget aliens, much like the Jawas. But the actors who played them did a really good job of making them seem a little threatening on Tatooine and a force to be reckoned with so kudos to the actors want to make sure we don't miss a spot. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. I'm going to get really, really underneath there with the brush. have to use a finer tip. Uh, I'm gonna clean off this brush. One thing I've noticed in painting is, is that you can't have the attitude of 
Um, putting off cleaning your brushes. They need to be cleaned right away in order to keep the, the tips and the bristles well. Um, we are going to go to triple zero for a finer tip. And we're going to be able to just go over the breath support thing here. That was already pretty pretty solid on the paint. But we're going to have to get this part right here. So I'm going to just going to follow that really slowly. So we don't get too much paint on the brown. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> I want to put some dots on the belt bandolier and the belt so we're just gonna put a dot there and a dot there over top of that small dot there get some more paint on the brush pull paint off make sure there's not too much so we can get the right little dot right there and right there. Growing up I used to watch a lot of Bob Ross and I've said it before and I'll say it again I I feel like Bob Ross doing this. <laughs> Here's some happy little dots. Alright looks like we've got most of the silver out of the way. I'm just going to come in with a brush and go over again. Make sure that we've got everything with this smaller brush to go in and get those details. I'm just going to go around again. The eyes ever so slowly. There we go. Yeah, now that looks much better, huh? Um, we're going to get the front of the mask with silver too. Um, we're going to use the triple zero brush again because it's a really small, small detail. We're going to come in here on the mask, just put in that detail. And I think after kind of reviewing some pictures, and since I'm kind of customizing this, I'm going to go in and do a little bit of a light dry brushing with a number 
one, and number two, yeah. And I'm gonna use, this is Reaper Miniatures Pro Paint Shield Brown. It's kind of a lighter brown. Might just take what's off the cap here. Okay. And then dry brushing means we're going to um, get some paint on the brush and then we're going to pull the paint off and get just a very little amount. And then we're going to we're going to weather this and see how it turns out. I'm going to weather the uh, the belt, the light brushing. Just to make some things pop and just make it a look a little worn. want to get just a, a little bit of paint on the brush. We're just going to go over this lightly just to make some details pop. Show a little weathering. too much. Come in here and see if I can pull that off. Shucks. I'm get a little water on the brush and see if I can pull it off. Yeah, there we go. That worked. Sometimes with art and painting you just gonna try what works. See what happens. Just coming over lightly with a watered brush. This brush has too much paint on it for what we're trying to do. Just trying to go lightly over this pseudo leather Just gonna go around. Ever so lightly with the brush. Using my finger to pull pull that paint off. Try to get it going there. Alright, I like that. Okay. Just a little more over the gloves just to give it some dimension, some detail.
can get a little bit in here in the mask now that it's really loose and I think we're almost done the next thing I want to do is I'm going to do a Nolan oil wash over the entire thing the entire figure go grab that What this is going to do is really make all the details pop in the figure. We're just going to use a, this is a number five brush. And we're just going to start going over everything with null and oil just to kind of get everything in there. You can see that that really makes the things pop out. I'm going to absorb some of the extra. just want it to go into things a little bit and just make it look like the character has been out in the sand. Might actually use a different oil. See what happens if we do this. Nope, it's not going to work. So we're going to finish with this black melon oil I want to really get it into the cracks is mainly where I'm shooting for. But I like the weathering look. Now that looks more like a seasoned sand trooper. Look at how the detail came out in the head. It's very nice. I'm happy. This concludes the Happy Star Wars Guy, this episode this week. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. 
Um, you can also look up Happy Star Wars on Instagram to see photos of my collection. And I'll put the links to where I got the paints and uh, where you can get them if you're looking to do something similar. Thanks. And may the Force be with you.